purple arrow near there and then show subtitles. And we would love it if you could have your cameras on. It just helps us engage with the audience better, build better community. Uh, so if you could leave that on, please do. Uh, we are gonna be recording this session and uploading it to YouTube. So if you um, speak at some point during the summit, you would appear on camera. So just know that. If you could also change your Zoom names by adding the school that you're here with. So the way you would do that is you uh, hover over your Zoom name, sorry about that. And where it says more, you'd click that and then change Zoom or rename. So rename if you could add your full name and the school that you're here with. And that just helps us know who's here, but also helps us later, we're gonna go into breakout rooms. If you have any comments or questions, you can put them in the chat. And if you'd like to be unmuted at any point during question and answer time, if you could raise your hand, we'll go ahead and unmute you. And we'd love it if you join the conversation on social media, if you're on any social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you're on, use the hashtag NYCYCS22. So I'm go that's it for me. I'm gonna go ahead and turn things over to a couple members of our Youth Leadership Council. We have Saranika Chakraborty and later Levi Linton. Saranika is a ninth grader at Brooklyn Tech High School and Levi is a ninth grader at West End Secondary School. So Saranika, thank you for being here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn things over to you. Thank you so much, Pat. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Saranika Chakraborty. I am a freshman at Brooklyn Technical High School. I joined the Youth Leadership Council because I wanted to take the opportunity to learn about um, sustainability and how as a high schooler, I will be able to make a change in our community. And thank you all for being here today. Um, we, will, we wanted to share some Brooklyn trivia with you today as an icebreaker. You'll have 15 seconds to answer each of these polls, so get ready. Okay, how many people live in Brooklyn? 84, 1.3 million, 2.5 million, or 6 billion? Okay, um, most of you got it. The answer is 2.5 million. Brooklyn is the most populated borough in New York City with about 3.1% of New York City's total population. Okay, next poll. How many kinds of plants are in the Brooklyn Botanic Garden? Three, 105, 8,000, or 12,000? Um, the answer is 12,000. Um, with the weather getting warmer, see if you can plan to visit the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. Okay, the next poll. When was the Brooklyn Bridge finished being built? 1700s, 1883, 1977, or the 2000s? Yes, all of you got it. It's 1888. Um, at the time of opening, it was the longest suspension bridge in the world. Today's schedule is 3.30 to 3.40 opening statements, 3.40 to 4 o'clock up rows, 4 o'clock to 4.20 Brooklyn Academy of Science and the Environment. Uh, 420 to 455 climate action planning and 455 to five o'clock closing. Um, all virtual, um, the schedule is all virtual 
3.30 to 5 o'clock each day, you will have a school and youth-led organization speak at every day. Every day will include time for climate action planning. March 30th will include three young people working in sustainability in New York City with time for breakout rooms and Q&A. At minimum, please come to the opening day, which already took place on March 10th, your, Brook, your school's borough day, which maybe is today, and the closing day. You're highly encouraged to come to days where your borough isn't located. In the chat, we will be providing a link to, a view, to view a full detailed schedule. Okay, now, I'd like to introduce Isabella Correa, a student activist with Uprose. Founded in 1966, Uprose is Brooklyn's oldest Latino community-based organization, an intergenerational, multiracial, nationally recognized community organization. Uprose promotes sustainability and resiliency in New York Sunset Park neighborhood through community organizing, um, education, indigenous and youth leadership development and cultural artistic expression. Isabella, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, let me just share my screen really quick. Hold on. Isabella, I'm also able to share it if you're having any any issues. I can bring it up. Yeah, I'm having some technical difficulties. Sure. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. Just let me know when to advance each. That's fine. Okay. Just give me one second, everybody. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. So you can go to the next slide. That's just the beginning. So um, as was said before, um, Uprose was founded in 1966 and we are a climate justice and environmental justice um, based organization. Um, and we also work for racial justice, gender justice, all of that really great stuff. And so we're intergenerational, which means that no matter your age, um, everybody's opinion is taken and everybody has an equal input. So we kind of share amongst generations how to organize, um, which leads to a really great effect, which is like benefiting the community. Um, so you can go to the next. Okay, so we're based in Sunset Park. I live in Sunset Park my entire life. Um, it's majority Latino and Asian. Um, so we work for a lot of racial justice as well. We're an environmental justice community, which means that we are based on the front lines. So we are surrounded by the BQE, a Con Ed substation and other high polluters like factories, which means that we usually have a lot higher health disparities than other communities might have. Um, and so we work against that and we work so that our community specifically is not as impacted by climate change and we can work to make better solutions for us. Um, it's also uh, one of New York City's few industrial working waterfronts, which means that we have a really specific way to work. We have a lot of um, working class people. So we try and make solutions that work for them the best. You can go to the next. So some campaigns, events, and protests that we usually have is um, the GRID implementation project. So GRID is green reindustrialization. So we have this industrial waterfront and we wanna make it so that the people in our community can keep their jobs, but have better pay and be producing something that's good for the environment while creating an economy. So um, creating uh, solar power um, factories, which would work with offshore wind, which is another project to get uh, clean air into the city, um, but making sure that the people working in the factories are not 
risking their health or risking the health of the community. And then we also have a lot of protests. Um, so the CLCPA funding, which is funding organizations like ours or um, other projects that would help um, in getting more money into the community. And then we also have Sunset Park Solar, which is community owned solar power so that we can become really dependent on so, uh, solar power instead of fossil fuels like we are now. And then we also have lots of education, art, and hydroponic garden events. We have a hydroponic garden from New York City Sunworks. And we were actually the first organization to get a hydroponic garden um, in office. So next slide. So Uprose Youth Leadership. Um, as I said before, we're intergenerational, which means that youth are involved in every part of organizing. Um, so we specifically for youth, uh, we did a lot of climate, we did a couple climate justice youth summits like this one um, back when we could have things in person where we uh, taught people about environmental justice, we had learning circles, we had some performances, um, and we got to have some really great discussions. Um, and then we over the summer where I worked the most, um, we worked with New York City Sunworks to put together the hydroponic garden and take care of it. And we also had um, two, so far two uh, hydroponic harvests, which um, we gave food out to the community. Next slide. Okay, so my favorite part of Uprose is the art that we produce. Um, we see art as just as important in organizing as anything else because it shows our community. It shows the, the life of our community. So these are some pieces that were created. So the first one uh, on the left side is Reclaim by Maria Dominguez and Upro staff. This is our newest piece of art. I was able to work on it, which is really cool, as well as all the other Upro's youth. Um, and I think it's a really beautiful way to show like the life of Uprose. Then the next one, the top in the middle is a giant parachute that was used at the People's Climate March in 2014, which I also worked on when I was seven years old, which is really cool. Uh, I went with my parents and a lot of other Uprose youth interns who were younger as well. Um, and then the People's Climate March, which that picture of all those people are all Uprose people. Um, we flooded the streets with sunflowers to show life and um, resilience. And then we used to have, unfortunately we don't, we lost it to Hurricane Sandy, but the Uprose electric bus, which was designed and created by Uprose youth, which I think is really beautiful um, and shows that we are all over the place. We are a moving movement. Um, yeah, so next slide. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's like the gist of Uprose um, and what we do. Um, please follow us on social so that you can be updated by what we do, all of our events. Um, if you wanna stay, if you wanna volunteer at Uprose, um, you can go to www.uprose.org. Um, and also subscribe to our e-blast because um, they, I think we have the best e-blast, but <laughs> they're very, very cool. Um, and you can stay updated as well and get a lot of information on climate justice. Yeah. Wow, thank you so much, Isabella. Fantastic art, by the way. That was very beautiful art. Um, can we give Isabella a virtual round of applause? Show her some love in the chat. Yes. We'd like to now open it up to audience questions. Please type your question in the chat or raise your hand if you'd like to ask a question. Sorry, it took me a second to find my unmute button. We do have a, a question from uh, Gabrielle in the audience. If you wanna go ahead and unmute. 
Sure. All right. So um, my question for you is, um, if you could give some examples as to how like the youth and I know that you said that like everybody can participate. So I don't know if you can like show, give us some examples of like specific things that the youth would do with um, other people who may be like older or younger than them and how they connect to help the climate change movement. Yeah, definitely. So um, I can talk from my own personal experience. So I was working with Uprose since March of 2021 um, and I became an official organizer in the summer. So my first meeting at Uprose was with the U.S. Energy Democracy Coordinator, or no, not that, sorry, the Department of Energy Secretary. So that was really cool. And my input was just as important as the input of all the adults at Uprose. Um, and we were able to give our perspective on what the um, struggles in Sunset Park are and why um, solar is so important, why um, offshore wind is so important um, and why working locally is so important because all of our issues are very, very different even though we're all impacted by climate change. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll read off from questions from the chat. Um, um, Eliza said, um, Isabella, could you explain what CLCPA is? Yeah, definitely. So um, it's basically an act which is to fund um, climate, clean climate jobs um, that could be smaller in um, factories creating, well, green factories creating um, building solar um, panels or building um, offshore wind turbines. Um, so to fund those jobs, to fund organizations like Uprose to um, spread education on climate justice or to put forward plans. Um, and basically we were fighting to fund it recently um, uh, statewide. So that's basically what it is. Um, another question was, what has been the most effective work you've done? I think um, putting together a hydroponic harvest, that was um, really important to me. That was not necessarily like a, a national or statewide thing, but it was the first event that we had in person after the pandemic. Um, and we had a bunch of community members come into our office and get um, food from our hydroponic garden. There was like music, um, we made art and I thought it was like really, really cool. Um, and I was able to uh, organize it with um, one of my coworkers, Naisha, who will be speaking at a later date, I think. So yeah. Okay. Um... So I think this is the last question. Um, what advice would you give a high school student who are interested in climate action uh, slash climate justice? I think um, protest a lot. Um, go to as many protests as you can um, because you can meet some really cool people who could get you education. I know um, we have a lot of events to educate people on climate and environmental justice. So looking out for things like that um, and not don't like be quiet because you're younger. I think you should be louder because we're younger because this is our future. So really voicing what you need to voice um, is super important. That's, yes, I agree. Um, if anyone else has questions, please put it in the chat or raise your hand. Okay. Yes. I actually have a question. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Isabella, you mentioned that you are seven when you worked on that mural. I'm curious, was that your first work with them or how did you get involved with them at such a young age? So my mom was very, very involved. Well, both my parents were very involved in Uprose um, when I was younger. So um, I used to go to meetings with them at their old office, which originally 
I did not like because I was seven. <laughs> um, but then we started going to art events and art building and I went to the People's Climate March. So um, that was like my first kind of introduction. And then I went back on my own um, in March of 2021. Okay. Okay. Thank you again to Uprose. Moving along, um, we're excited sorry, to have- Sorry, here. Sarah, Nika. I think we have one more question oh, that just okay. came in. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, okay. Can you explain community-owned um, solar? Um, how is it different from putting solar panels on your home? So um, this is a good question because this is the first question I had when I heard about uh, community-owned solar. So basically, it's to put a lot of energy out into the grid. So the grid is where all of, like basically every house gets is on the grid in New York City or in Sunset Park. So if one person has solar panels, um, they could either have it going directly to their house or out into the grid. When everybody is encouraged to have it, we put out so much more um, green energy, which is really, really good. Um, it also encourages neighbors to talk to one another about climate justice and about solar power. And um, it can kind of build a foundation for, um, do you need money to get a solar panel? Um, because they are unfortunately expensive for the working class people in our community. So kind of building that like um, economic and environmental like consciousness in the community. Yes. Okay, um, does anyone else have questions? <laughs> okay, um, if not, then um, thank you again, Isabella. And um, now um, we are excited to, um, to have here with us the Brooklyn Academy of Science and the Environment, also known as BASE. This school partners with the Brooklyn Botanic Garden and the Prospect um, Park Alliance uh, to provide students with opportunities for outdoor hands-on learning. Um, I'll turn it over to base students who are with us today, Alifa and Anthony. Hello everyone, just one second so we can share our screen. Uh... Sorry, one second. Uh, okay. So um, thank you for the wonderful introduction. My name is Anthony um, and today I'm joined by Alifa and we go to Base High School, um, basically just right across the street from Brooklyn Botanic Garden. Um, and today we're here to talk to you about some of the initiatives surrounding um, the environment and sustainability in our school. Um, and so in our presentation today, we're going to be discussing some of the initiatives as well as um, just some overall things that we've done over the past couple of years in order to benefit our community um, to become more sustainable. Um, and so founded almost 20 years ago in 2003, Base and Prospect Park um, founded Base High School um, in Prospect Park campus. And Base utilizes its resources and learning opportunities from Brooklyn Botanical Garden and Prospect Park on a regular basis. And we use this as a tool to really enhance the learning of our students. Um, it enhances our student development, not just in school, but also outside of school, um, which we take very much pride in. Um, also throughout the presentation, we may refer to uh, Brooklyn Botanical Garden as BBG, just because that's just what we're used to after um, this great amount of time. Um, so also in partnership with Brooklyn Botanical Garden and Prospect Park, each year we host different um, activities there with them, which we always have lots of fun at. Um, also in addition, which is just a great plus of being a base student, um, each year base families uh, receive a base family pass to Brooklyn Botanical Garden and students are able to go with their families um, throughout the course of the year to different events like their um, Cherry Blossom Festival. Um, and those are just really cool, just some of the really cool opportunities in which they offer. Um, hi everyone. I am a student at BASE. I'm Alifa, by the way. Um, so first off, we have field studies. Uh, field studies is a course that you have to take when you're in your freshman year. 
So it's a course with um, living environment. So if you're taking living environment, you also have to take field studies. So it's like a required co um, course that you have to take. Uh, field studies um, is a urban ecology course for base um, freshmen. And it's basically where you um, explore different um, uh, learning experiences in your in parks like Prospect Park in BBG. Like for example, there are like lots of um, inquiry based learning. For example, testing water quality um, and also learning about trees and flowers. And also like, for example, how old the trees are, how um, long the trees has been, you know, alive. And also, yeah, so we learn about these environmental based um, information and we gain those information. And field study is a really um, good experience for students because they get to learn and experience the parks. And yeah. Um, second off, we have the garden crew. Garden crew is basically where um, is a volunteering um, group of students where they plant, they grow, and they harvest vegetables. And it's basically gardening and cooking. Um, it's horrible based cooking. You know, it's all vegetables. And yeah. And also we meet, we meet um, once a week for an hour and a half. It's in spring and fall. So right now we don't have garden crew because um, the next um, garden crew we have is on um, uh, spring. And also everything grown is donated uh, to Memorial Sloan Catering Cancer Center. Um, so we donate those, um, whatever we have grown into the garden to this um, Memorial Sloan. So yeah. So right, so another club that we also offer at base is our hiking club. And so this is another club at base similar to Garden Crew um, in which uh, students are exposed to life outside of the city. Um, and these are mid environments in which we're probably all used to. And so base will offer multiple opportunities um, throughout the entire school year for students to participate in hikes. Um, and this helps them to, for one, gain a larger appreciation and understanding for the environment. Um, but also just have a great time. Uh, we went on a, I think one or two hikes already this school year. Um, and usually we just come upon a tree or some leaves and we just start talking about them, what we notice. Um, and it leads to great discussion. Um, and in addition, this is a great way to build community and also develop our own leadership skills. Um, and so we wanna work to kind of learn, but also have fun at the same time. And that's basically what hiking club is all about. Um, we would go usually upstate for the entire day um, and with our peers um, hike and have a good time. So we offer hikes in two different ways. So we have incentive hikes and hikes for people who really just want to participate in a hike or go on a hike. Um, so incentive hikes usually take place on Wednesdays um, and they're for students who are usually on honor roll. So it's kind of like a reward. Um, you get to go outside and experience something new. Um, and for our hikes on Saturdays, usually we have like members that have been with us um, from ninth or 10th grade. Um, and it's just a really great experience that they keep coming back and we keep doing more of it, which I think is pretty excellent in itself. Um, next off, we have the internships and the opportunities. Um, at base, we give a lot of internships and opportunities. We have a lot of internships and some of the internships is partnership with BBG and Prospect Park. And some of them are um, Garden Apprentice Program, which is partnership with the BBG. We have Woodlands Youth Crew. We have Park Youth uh, Representatives Program at Prospect Park. We also have um, Prospect Park Community Committee, which I am proud of, and also Anthony is part of it. And these opportunities and internships is basically for us to build leadership skills and for us to gain knowledge about um, for our next step in our career and for our future as well. And we get to learn about environmental and um, environmental uh, learning opportunities. And also um, it's um, also like, you know, we are socializing with lots of people. It's also building relationships um, in these programs and also learning about um, um, also learning about environment as well. 
Yeah, and so I guess I can just touch a bit on Prospect Park Community Committee. Um, it's something that uh, our base students have been a part of for a while, um, but due to COVID, it kind of interrupted that. And so now that we're able to um, kind of get back into that, it's really important for us to be able to reach out to Prospect Park, which is a resource that we use a lot, utilize a lot um, because our partnership is so strong, we think we should take advantage of our, every opportunity which comes our way. I mean, so that's just one of the pros to having Prospect Park kind of right around the corner. Um, and so finally, uh, we'll talk a little bit about our base green team. And so the green team is an integral club at base. Um, and we kind of work to promote and educate other students on topics uh, surrounding sustainability, but also climate change. Um, and so usually at the start of each meeting, kind of this community thing that we do, as we sit around and eat granola bars or different snacks, and it kind of just brings us all together. Um, and it gets us ready to kind of discuss and progress ourselves forward. Um, and so the green team is known for facilitating a lot of school-wide campaigns um, surrounding the environment, um, more recently, um, specifically with climate change. Uh, just for an example, our spring 2021 a uh, climate change banner project in which we basically came together during our green team meetings and we created some banners and you can see them in some of the pictures here in the middle and the bottom left. Um, us kind of just putting them up and also the community interacting with them. And so while it was great for us as a learning experience um, and kind of to also use teamwork to get it all done, um, it also benefited the community in a way in which we, I think that's something yeah, and we also did it all on Zoom, which is kind of astonishing, um, which I think is really cool. Um, got to interact with the community, but also learn. Um, and so we also are the leaders of BASE's recycling and compost efforts. Um, so during the school year, our green team also works to educate, like I said earlier, not just on environmental um, sustainability and climate change, but also on um, how we can make a difference in our schools. Um, and so we teach them how they can recycle in our classrooms since we have paper, um, plastic, plate, paper and plastic recycling bins, as well in the cafeteria where they have those bins available, um, as well as compost bins. Um, and so we teach them how to use that and also how they can spread their efforts to um, being at home, um, which is really great because sure, just making a difference in school is a very great accomplishment. Um, however, spreading these to also take place at home is really another accomplishment in itself. Um, and so obviously with work comes a little bit of fun. And so the green team will also participate in many opportunities um, throughout the school year to continue their own uh, learning with field trips, uh, gardening activities and park cleanups, which you can also see in some of the uh, slides there, um, which we have a lot of fun doing. Um, and I guess one more thing is our lunch monitor programs. Um, and so going back to what I was talking about, about composting and recycling in our cafeteria, um, we usually have lunch monitors and they help students recycle, sorry, sort their recycling and their composting materials into the right bins. And we wanna make the biggest difference possible. And so if that requires helping each other, that's what we're gonna do to make the change in which we wanna see in ourselves. Uh, and then we're also working with, well, this year and specifically, we're working with other schools in the building to kind of cultivate and come together to create this building-wide um, recycling um, effort to make the most difference that we can. Um, so working with other schools, we're trying to demonstrate like a site-wide effort in which we can make the most out of the resources and opportunities in which we have for us here at BASE. Um, Green team as a whole is a friendly group of people there. And it's not like we're also teaching them. It's also like we're also learning about many things that we didn't, for example, I didn't know about. So like, Green team is a learning experience um, for us and for students at base. And it's basically educating others and educating ourselves. So green team is a really, really good experience for us. So yeah, thank you. Awesome. Um, just wanna say that thank you for inviting us and thank you for having us. And if you have any questions for, or concern, please do share them in your comments. All right. Okay, um, thank you, Anthony and Alifa. Um, that was fantastic. Um, we'd now like to, um, so 
would like to now open it up to questions. And we have a few questions in the chat already um, from Eliza. We have, um, what do you do in the community uh, committee? Uh, do you work with adults and other people outside of your school? Um, so yeah, so Prospect Park Community Committee, it's a group of uh, people, um, well, let me be more specific, organizations around Prospect Park who utilize the park often. Um, and we basically come together um, in order to talk about um, advancements made to the park. And we kind of discuss different um, opportunities in which the park may be undergoing. Um, and so we kind of all discuss what is best for the park. Um, because as people who use it, it's great that they want to hear our opinions, like, which is kind of why we took advantage of the opportunity, because um, it is a great one. Um, so yeah, we get to meet with uh, lots of adults in a way. I um, mean, I guess some career expo exploration goes along with that as well. Okay. Um, um, this is from our youth uh, leadership council member, um, Gats. Gabby, um, what is one thing that you have learned from being part of BASE? Um, one thing that, that we learn um, um, during BASE Green Team is that we learn lots of, lot of um, information about climate change and also global warming and also um, composting. And like we went deep into them and we learned a lot all facts about them that we didn't know about and how important we informations are for us to know so climate change global warming and also composting and recycling it's something that we learned we knew but we learned it in depth so yeah okay um this is also from our youth leadership council member levi um what is your favorite part of base um favorite part about base um like the whole base has to be the fact that um the teachers are really engaging um for you to learn and also they're engaging for you for us to learn about um the environment as well for like climate change we had a presentation about climate change and the teachers actually also contributed so, and it's great that teachers are also, um, you know, part of these um, projects and it's really fun. And also we have lots of um, environmental based um, opportunities in BASE, which is great because I like working on um, environmental based um, opportunities, so yeah. So I guess I can also answer that question. Um, so I guess my favorite part of BASE would actually be the community. Um, so we're all able to come together and celebrate our successes, but also um, learn from anything that may hypothetically go wrong or just continue to advance to the future and collaborate with one another and band together when something um, is necessary, such as, such as sustainability and really making an effort to do something to not just benefit our own community, but um, the world itself. Thank you. Um, does anyone else have questions? Um, put them, you can put them in the chat or um, unmute. Okay, um, this is from Pat. Um, how can students outside of base get involved in Prospect Park and um, BBG? Yeah, and so Prospect Park um, per se, I would, they do have a lot of internships open to students. Um, and so uh, specifically Prospect Park Alliance's website, um, they do have a internship category in which you're able to kind of see what's open at the moment because they do change pretty frequently. Um, but there's always something that you can help out with, whether that's volunteering um, or even a part-time job. Uh, some of the internships that we mentioned were exclusive to base students, but there are definitely ways that you can um, make an impact and kind of help them wherever needed. Um, for BBG, I didn't really touch on that, sorry. Um, so for BBG, um, the Garden Apprentice Program, which Alifa uh, touched upon briefly, that is open to all students in New York City. However, base students, um, they do have, uh, I believe they have some type of uh, priority 
or not priority, but some, because you go to base, like there's some type of connection there because of that partnership, that long withstanding partnership there. Okay, I'll definitely look into that. Um, okay, um, also Pat wrote, just curious, what are some places you've gone hiking? Oh, can you hear me? Yep, sorry. Uh, oh. Some places that we've been so far, uh, COVID, so I started back in ninth grade, but because of COVID, um, some things kind of got interrupted. Um, but some places that we often visit is Harriman State Park. Um, they have great hiking, tra hiking trails, um, the Appalachian Mountain Trails, um, and also Cold Spring is really a fun hiking place to kind of go. Um, and also like about hiking, I just want to say that hiking is also good for your mental health. And yeah. it's also not only your physical health, but mental health, because, you know, when I went to hiking, it helped me a lot to not like think about anything about stress or anything it's just that I'm just you know climbing those mountains even though I fell a lot of times but still was a great experience because you know I did something and I had like you know I accomplished something and when I went up there it was really a nice feeling so it's good for your mental health yeah I second that there okay um I, have, I have one more oh. question if we, and I think we have time yeah yeah okay so Alifa, you mentioned the, I think you called it the Memorial Store where you donate excess produce. Is that a community, uh, something that's open to your school community, to outside? If you could just explain that one more time, that'd be great. Um, so we basically donate the food that we make in during our gardening trip. Like for example, whenever we harvest those uh, vegetables or we make, for example, teas, or anything based, um, horrible based food. We donate those food in this um, um, Memorial Sloan Cancer Center. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so thank you all to all of our speakers today. Um, please make a nice comment or put an emoji in the chat for them all. Um, um, I'm now going to turn things over to my fellow uh, Youth Leadership Council member, Levi Linton. Um, hi, so thank you, Saranika, and thank you to Anthony Alifa, and Alifa from BASE and Isabella from UPROS. Um, so my name is Levi Linton, and I'm a ninth grader at West End Secondary School. Um, I personally joined the YLC to learn more about climate change and sustainability, um, as well as just contribute where I can. Um, I also joined just to get to talk and communicate to other teenagers who care about the climate and sustainability. Um, so now we'll be talking about climate action planning. And as a reminder, climate action planning is an important part of the summit each year. It's your chance to identify areas of, act of climate action at your school and take initiative. For example, schools in the past have decided to complete energy audits to reduce energy usage in their school, contact their local elective officials to resume organics collection in New York City, and partner with nearby sustainability organizations on environmental justice campaigns. So last week, we took photos from around our school and completed the photo survey. This week, we'll be looking at the survey results to identify one climate issue at our schools that we can tackle and one overall goal to address that issue. And then our final week, which I think is Thursday, March 31st, um, we'll build out steps for the remainder of our school year to address that goal. Um, so something to keep in mind as you work on your climate action plan is anything that you may have learned from one of the speakers that you could incorporate into your goal. So last week we heard about climate education and eco art and climate activism. Um, and today we heard from UPROSE and about climate justice. And we also heard from BASE about the power of partnering with nearby organizations. Um, so I think Pat is now going to screen share um, about how to, um, how to uh, uh, access the survey results. So that's what we're going to be doing now. So using a laptop or a tablet, go to the website 
this website. I think it's going to be put in the chat. Um, and there you'll be able to see your survey entries and photos from week one of the summit. Um, and so you won't be able to see the survey results on your phones. You will need to use either a laptop or a tablet. So on the landing page, you'll see all participating schools entries. It's amazing how many photos you guys have. So I'm going to wait a second to just let people get up to there. So in the chat while we're waiting, tell me what, what sort of photos you guys see. So yeah, from Pat, we see a lot of plants. So yeah, there's a lot of green areas and green spaces within our school, which is obviously important. Um, so from Eliza, school food trays, so food waste and other stuff. Um, recycling bins, so recycling and taking, getting rid of our waste properly. So yeah, that's also what I've noticed a lot of, like green areas and recycling especially. Um, yeah, those are very prominent within our schools. Um, okay, so once you're on the landing page, um, we're going to just hone in on the results from Brooklyn schools. So click on the filter tab at the top of the page, up over there. Yeah. Um, and then once you're there, um, where it says your first name, adjust the drop down option to select the borough of your school. In the box next to the value box, you will we'll then select your borough. Once you have done that, click Apply at the bottom of the page. So I'm going to wait again just to make sure people have caught up here. And as you can see, there's been a lot of photos from Brooklyn, especially 47. That's quite a lot. So yeah, a lot of plants, a lot of recycling. You can see some infrastructure, some public transportation, stuff like that. So yeah, now you're seeing all the photo and data from other schools and your school in your borough. So once you've looked at stuff, once you've looked at the photos and results from your own borough, then you delete. Um, then we're going to delete that filter by using the trash icon in the lower left. Um, and now we'll just look at your school's results. Where it says your first name, adjust the drop down option to Brooklyn, select your school. Um, in the box next to the value box, select your school, whatever that may be. Um, and then once you've done that, click Apply at the bottom of the page again. So now you're just looking at um, the results from your own school, which can be cool to see. So if there are any questions about navigating this or getting to where we're at now, just let us know in the chat. Yeah. So it seems like we're not getting any questions right now. Good thing. Um, so in the chat, tell me, what are the most common photo categories at your school? And as a side question, what are the least common categories? And it's important to keep in mind that just because a category isn't common doesn't mean that it's not important. This may mean that your school could do a better job addressing that category, or that it's just difficult to find photos. 
So green space gardening, yeah, a lot of plants, a lot of green spaces around schools. So yeah, some categories that I've noticed that there's not a lot of is indigenous lands um, and art. And yeah, those can also just be difficult to find pictures of. Um, yeah, so from Saranika, we're not seeing a lot of art and fashion, civic action, environmental justice, food, indigenous lands, and infrastructure. So that may be a category that your school needs to work on or yeah that you could focus your cap, your climate action plan on. And yeah, we're seeing a lot of recycling, waste, um, environmental justice and education, green spaces, infrastructure. Okay, so the next step is for everyone to navigate this cap document. Um, the link is on the screen and in the chat. Um, you'll use this document to frame your conversation for this week and the final week of the summit. Everyone, please take a minute to save it as a Google Doc or download it. Um, so, yeah, please note that this document is just meant to guide your conversation. Um, if you can capture your ideas in another way that makes sense for your group, then that's great. Um, drawings, shared Google Slides, Excel list of steps, they're all great. Anything that works for you guys. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions about this document, just put them in the chat. Okay, so I'm not seeing any questions about the Google Doc. So I'll wait a little bit longer just to make sure everyone has it done. Okay, so uh, hopefully everyone has the doc open now or is looking at it. So we're now going to be spending about 20 minutes looking through our photo survey results and then working through week two of the CAP document with our schools. Um, if you're all together, go ahead and get started. You can turn off your camera um, and we'll see you back here at 4.55 for a share out about what you talked about. Um, and if you're not together with everyone from your school and there's people from your school that are on this Zoom, but you're not in the same location as them, um, then you can stay here and we'll launch Zoom breakout rooms so that you can join a room with your school to discuss. Um, Brooklyn schools, your schools are at the top of the list and begin with a K. Um, so if anyone has any questions, we will be here in this main room to take them or anything you need. So welcome back everyone. Um, so in the chat, right, which category do you think is the most important to address for your school, school community? Can I just unmute? Because I think it's more sure. easier. Um, so, um, so my school, so Brooklyn Tech, um, so we choose like three categories because they like worked out. So um, education, 
um, media and communication, and then art and fashion. Yeah. <laughs> so have you guys decided which um, one you think you're going to be focusing on, or are those just some preliminary ideas for now? So um, I think we're going to mostly focus on education, but um, so I think like in our school, we have this magazine, fashion magazine, and I think like through that we can like, um, uh, we can like address the fashion sustainability, like fashion. Um, so maybe that will work out. Um, and communication, I think goes with like education. So yeah, like, <laughs> I guess that will work out. Um, so we heard from Brooklyn Tech. Um, does anyone else want to share on what category they decided to address? Or um, yeah, okay. So feel free to put in the chat. But um, thank you, ever. thank you for sharing. Um, so feel free to tweak your um, cap over the next few weeks. So you can do this in your school, you can do it during green team meetings, you can do it whenever you feel is necessary. Um, and remember, you can come to any of the other borough days, um, but at a minimum, we wanna see you at the closing day of the summit on March 31st, two weeks from now. Um, closing day, we'll work on building out steps to our climate action plans for the rest of the school year. Um, so you can check out our resource portal for the detailed schedule, climate action resources, and upcoming ways to get involved in the outside of the summit, um, which I think is going to be put in the chat. Um, and students, we want your emails so that we can stay in touch for steps after the summit. And please complete the form, which I think is also going to be put in the chat. Um, yeah, so thank you everyone for being here and thank you to our guests for speaking and we'll see you next week or two weeks. <laughs>